What's up everybody? Today we are talking about one of the most popular studio strobe modifiers, the beauty dish. Let's get it. Oh my God. <laughs> I do this for a living, you still getting used to it. It's all or nothing for my music, don't abuse it, lose it. What's up guys? It's your boy Bryce and I'm back. And like Amanda said earlier, we're gonna talk about one of the most popular studio strobe modifiers, the beauty dish. I'm gonna show you guys some tips and tricks to get the best out of your beauty dish. I'm gonna show you what I do with the beauty dish in the studio when I'm using it for my portraits. I'm also gonna talk a little, about, a little bit about the actual dish itself and the components that go with it and what they all do. That way, when you get one, you know what does what and gives you the desired effect on your light. Then, I'm gonna bring Amanda over here to the famous blue wall for the headshots, and I'm gonna show you which, what each modifier does and what kind of light it produces. And I'm also gonna show you two lighting setups for it. I'm gonna show you an overhead beauty lighting. That's kind of like a clamshell lighting. And I'm gonna show you a typical side lighting or um, Rembrandt lighting with the beauty dish so you guys can see the difference. All right, let's get it. All right, guys, so we're all set up here. I know you see different lights on, but that's just studio lighting for the video. I've got one light, Alien B 800, sitting probably about a foot, maybe a, maybe two feet above Amanda right now, and I've got it on a boom, straight above her. This is the first setup that we're gonna do with the beauty dish. Got the beauty dish already mounted, and all I have on it right now is the sock, and of course inside the inner reflector. So right now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a couple shots so you guys can see, what this look like. This is typical beauty lighting. It works on everybody um, and it looks good all the time, but I'm gonna show you guys one of the downfalls of this lighting when you've got it on a boom and you've got it above somebody. So I'm gonna take a quick shot and then show you guys what it looks like. All right, so here's how to fix those shadows under the chin. What you wanna do is you wanna grab a reflector. My reflector's got handles. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do is have Amanda get back in her mark right there and just hold this right underneath her chin. I'm gonna get it close as possible without it being in my frame. Show you guys what it looks like. All right, pro tip. Try to get your reflector in a position where it will give off a catch light in the eye. So it gives you two catch lights, gives you the illusion that you have two lights. Let's see if we can try to get that done. There we go. All right, that's it for the sock. Let's move on to the grid. All right guys, so we got the sock swapped out. We now have the grid on there. And what this is gonna do is it's going to point that light big time like we talked about earlier. So what I'm gonna do right now so that you guys can actually see it is I'm gonna kill my video lights. I'm gonna kill all the lights in the studio except for the modeling light that's on the Alien B. All right guys, so I have disappeared. It is my greatest superpower when it comes to playing hide and go seek at night. <laughs> I'm here, I'm gone. I'm here, and I'm gone. So, as you can see, the light has become very tight. It's almost like a flashlight now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel, I'm gonna peel this grid off so there's nothing on the video this so you can see the difference. All right, you see how the light is spreading way up on the ceiling, it's going all the way on the floor. It's actually even in front of a man to head it back towards where I'm shooting from. But when I grid it, that light is restricted to the shape of the beauty dish. I'm gonna take a shot the way we have it right now. And another pro tip, 
ask your model if she can see straight into the light. If she can see straight into the light, that means the light is pointing directly at her. If it's kind of fuzzy, that means your light's pointing kind of away from her. She's not gonna get the whole light. That grid is pointing in a different direction. So just quick and easy, ask your model, hey, look straight up, tell me if you can look directly in the light and it doesn't look hazy to you. All right, let's take a shot. All right, guys, so pro tip, if you do not, let me. If you do not want the light on your background, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to get rid of it. You wanna rotate that light down towards the floor. Again, using your modern light, you can see where your flash is gonna go, right? So what you wanna do is just rotate your beauty dish straight down until you see it go away. See, it went away from Amanda, so I start rotating it back until I see that I'm getting all of her face and it has gone away from the background. And I can come, grab my camera, get my model in her pose, and bam. Look at that background, completely gone. So Amanda just asked a good question. It's probably a very common question. Do you ever use the sock and the grid at the same time. Me personally, no, because all you're doing is cutting more power off of your light. Um, you can, I honestly think that you don't need to. For the purposes that I use, I don't typically grid and sock, but it is absolutely possible for you to do that. Great answer, student. Complimenting yourself, professor. You're the student. You said great answer. Great question, students. I just school. All right, guys. I'm gonna pull this down off of the boom, put it on a regular light stand, and show you guys how to do Rembrandt lighting with the same fine. All right, we're back. So I have taken the beauty dish off of the boom and have placed it just on a standard light stand. Um, and just for the sake of time for the video, I'm only going to do this lighting setup with the sock. So I'm gonna take a shot. And chin down. Boom. Here's how to fix the glare that we're getting in her glasses. Don't try to go back home and Photoshop that. I'm telling you, you are gonna hate yourself if you took 20 to 30 shots of somebody with their glasses on and you've got glare in there and you're going in there to Photoshop that. You're gonna hate yourself because you're being dumb and you're being lazy while you're doing your photo shoot. Just move your light. So all you gotta do is change the angle of reflection, angle of refraction. Re reflection, re refraction, angle of incident. One of those things where the light's hitting her glasses and coming back to my lens. Change it. <laughs> All you want to do is just take your light and kind of flatten it out a little bit, move it back around her, and then feather it back across. You don't want to go too far into side lighting because what that's going to do is it's going to completely put this side of her face into shadow. You don't really want to do that unless that's your desired effect. But if this is just a portrait, you don't want to go that far. If for some reason you can avoid it, Get your reflector out. Yeah. Let's see where it was. They want to slap me in the face. Chin down a little bit, baby. All right, guys. So there you have it. That's the beauty dish, and those are my tips and tricks for using that. I appreciate you guys stopping by and checking us out. Tag team back again. Check in direct then. Let's begin. <laughs> party on, party people. Make sure you guys smash that like button for me. It helps me out so much. Let's me know that you guys are out there, you're enjoying what we're doing, and that you guys want more. If you guys have any questions about what we did, 
please drop down in the comments. I get back to everybody that goes into the comments because I appreciate it that much. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Help me out a little bit. And until the next time, holla. Oh, Dallas. Load it up, baby. Load it up. Load it up. Come on.